Hi guys, to one of the previous videos we have received a comment with a question whether high suspension paramotors suck. Absolutely not. Whatever paramotor gets you in the air safely is a great paramotor because you will have uh, the experience of your lifetime. Now there are a few paramotors that can do it better than others depending on flying style. So today we'll ma we will make the final conclusion on suspension and to decide which suspension fits the best to your needs. Welcome to my classroom. This is part 10 of the insights into paramotor geometry. Today we will do the final big comparison on all suspension systems available on the market. Now here is the complete lineup uh, with all the suspension systems and characteristics that we have covered in the previous videos. You see the list is really, really long. I have put everything on, uh, on one page. Now to find what is the best paramotor, it would be the easiest to just count the green, reds and blues. Now such a conclusion is totally wrong because pilots have different flying styles. This means they have differing flying needs and they have different requirements of the paramotor. So let's get to the flying styles. As I said uh, in one of the previous before, I would depict these four categories. Cross-country pilot, which is probably the most, uh, the largest group. Uh, freestyle and slalom, acrobatics and thermaling. For this comparison and summary, I would split the cross-country cruiser group into two categories. Cross-country cruisers with mostly short flights and adventure pilots with long demanding flights. Let's see what is the best suspension system for short flights cruisers. So we are talking about easy, relaxing flights, not very long, in controlled environment, controlled conditions. That's why weight use authority and feedback in turbulence will probably not be your priority. These flights also happen mostly without the use of speed bar, so speed bar behavior can be easily ignored as well. Ground handling um, is definitely important, but as the, you normally take only half of the fuel tank, the paramotor is not so heavy. It, it is important, but probably not the priority. Comfort in flight, reaching from the glider controls. I mean, it's good to have a comfortable position of your arms in flight, but as these flights are short, I wouldn't say it's a must. Uh, nervous in turbulence, for most beginners and most uh, pilots of this group, it is pretty advantage when the, the paramotor behaves really calm in turbulence. So let's go back to our comparison and see what suspension would be the best. The best way to choose the ideal suspension system is to look at the core characteristics first, that is crucial, and then analyze the rest. Uh, I have depicted nervous in turbulence as the, as the crucial characteristics for short-term cross-country flights. High suspension and the medium behave pretty calm and the low suspension systems are more nervous. So in this case, I would recommend the high and medium. If you look at this final summary, probably the medium would be my choice. Adventure cross-country flying is characterized by long flights, fully loaded with all your camping gear, flying all day in turbulent conditions and demanding locations. Uh, while you probably don't need much weight shift authority for your, long, uh, for your flight, but you need glider feedback as you are facing turbulence and you want to know what's happening with your glider. On these kind of flights, you push the speed bar to, get, uh, to penetrate, so speed bar behavior is something to consider as well. Ground handling, I would depict this as sort of a crucial, uh, a crucial characteristics because when you're fully loaded, extra gear, cameras, radios, batteries, camping gear, and full tank, maybe extra fuel in, in a canister, it is important to have the ability to run fast, especially if you take into consideration that you might have a really tight spot 
or you may take off at high altitude somewhere in the mountains. So ground clearance and pilot's posture is important when you carry a lot of weight. Reach for the glider controls is crucial. Uh, considering a long flight, you definitely don't want to spend three hours or four hours uh, like this, because this will make you tired. Reach for the camera and other gear and the freedom of movement is important, although not crucial. Nervous in turbulence, this is part of the adventure, so accept it. Let's see how our table looks like. I have highlighted the crucial characteristics with yellow and of all these combinations it looks like the medium suspension with gooseneck bars is the best combination. You get pretty good ground handling and running ability with the high suspension but your hands may get tired after a while and it's exactly the opposite. A bit more demanding takeoffs fully loaded with the low suspension and comfortable arm position as a reward. Overall I would say in this case the medium suspension system would be the best. So the next flying style is freestyle and slalom flying. Definitely handling is your priority number one. Intensive use of speed bar makes the speed bar behavior a crucial characteristic as well. As a freestyle and slalom pilot, you will probably end up with a heavy engine on your back and flying a small, agile, fast glider. This will increase the speed on takeoffs and landings. That's why ground clearance and pilot posture is important on takeoffs and landing. Comfort in flight. Well, comfort is not the priority number one when, when in terms of freestyle and, uh, and slalom, but it's something to consider. Nobody cares about reaching for a camera or your zipper when you're flying slalom or freestyle. And as a slalom pilot, you probably avoid turbulent conditions or you're skilled enough to handle it. So your highlighted priority would be weight shift authority and speed bar behavior. This sort of gets the high suspension systems out of the game and you get a really good results with the medium and low suspension systems. Overall, the best option would be the Scout hybrid bars and the gooseneck and the gooseneck bars. You get pretty good results with the low moving bars as well. Now let's talk about the ideal paramotor for the Acro Freaks. It's definitely all about handling. That's the priority number one. Uh, and Acro pilots don't really care much about speed bar. They don't use it much. Ground handling is not crucial because pilots normally fly light engines and uh, these pilots are extremely skilled so they they can ground handle any paramotor pretty much comfort in flight obviously acrobatics is not about comfort but a natural position for the arms is extremely beneficial for good acro performance so the final comparison in our table all unimportant features deleted and we ended up with total weight shift authority and reach for the uh, glider controls in flight as crucial character characteristics again high suspension systems are sort of out of the game and you get the best performance with low suspension system either moving bar or the hybrid bars and with some compromises you get good results with the gooseneck bars and the fixed low bars The final, but probably the smallest group of pilots are pilots who do thermaling. For thermaling, handling and glider feedback is the priority number one, absolutely. You probably don't care much about speed bar behavior as you use the engine mostly for climb out. Ground handling is probably not a priority, it is enough to take a little, little fuel so the paramotor is not very heavy on your back. You definitely want a good reach for your glider controls. You don't want to spend hours and hours in the air with your arms all the way up. You probably don't care about turbulence because this is actually what you seek for. I have highlighted the weight shift authority and reach for the glider 
as you see this takes high suspension system out of the game you get the best results with a low suspension system and very good results with the gooseneck moving bars Most of you are not single style pilots. You fly short cross country flights, at least dream about long adventure flights and you now and then add some freestyle to it. This is why when you want to choose the best suspension for you, you need to combine. For this kind of mixture, in my opinion, the gooseneck bars would be the best compromise. Now this is the end of the suspension block. It's time to move on. The next topic is torque on paramotors. While most pilots know about torque and they have experienced it in flight, I have found out that, that many pilots have little knowledge about the physics behind. You don't want to miss that, so please hit the subscribe button. Should you have any questions, please leave a comment. Thanks for watching, thanks for sharing and see you soon.